Hi guys, Matt DeCrenna here from Beyond Grappling. Uh, ever since the IGF came out with the, the new rules for the next kind of three years, I've had heaps of emails of people asking me about can they do this, can they do that, or or that they hate it, or that they like it, or what do I think about it, So or and that sort of stuff. So I thought I'd do a little screen capture today. Uh, I could type it up, but it might take me ages, so I thought I could just do a, a screen capture of it and just go through it with you and that sort of stuff. So... Um, so yeah, this uh, came out uh, kind of January 1st, um, and they're going to trial these rules uh, for the next kind of nine months. So starting from the Paris Grand Slam in January, starting next week, uh, all the way up through the world the world titles in Rio. It's a little bit annoying that they did kind of, we're going to experiment with it, because after the Rio world titles, are they going to like take some rules away or add them, and then you're going to change your style of... You know, more about your approach to training than necessarily your techniques. It's your, your, your mental approach when you visualize things for so long and then they add them or take them away. It can be a little really, really annoying. I'd rather if the IJF just said, righto, here are the rules for the next three years and we all deal with it, opposed to here they are for three years, but after nine months we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. So that's really frustrating. Uh, so the first rule they have is that they're going to have one referee on the mat instead of three, and they're going to have one referee uh, behind a table with a video camera that can replay things, and they're going to be assisted by a referee commission member or another referee. So it's going to be a rotation system. This is not a bad idea for a few reasons. One, say the world titles, you've got 300 referees, but only 100 of them are good. The other 200 aren't that good. Those other 200 that aren't that good are going to be on the mat each and every kind of round. At least with only one referee on the mat, um, they won't get less tired of kind of doing it, and you can have top quality refs on every mat for a longer period of time. So um, that'd be really good. Rather than having you know 200 okay refs, we're going to have 100 good quality ones on each mat area. Um, the, the the reason why we have those refs on the edges, on the sides or the corners, is to just see whether a throw was in or out. That's pretty much it. Um, but now with a bigger mat area, now it's 10 by 10. Um, hopefully, um, through the video replay, hopefully it's got more than one angle. We don't know that. It could just be one angle. Uh, but I think they should have at least three um, video cameras showing all angles. Um, uh, but, you know, with refereeing and, and point calling and that sort of stuff, it's always, you know, up to the spectator and, and that sort of stuff. So that's the first rule. It's not too bad. Um so I don't, I don't mind it too much, really, having one referee on the mat. And it also means when you're filming that when a throw happens, there's never a referee in the way. How often have you went, you get someone to film your fights and you do a throw or they throw you and there's a referee in front and you don't get to see the full throw. It happens all the time. So hopefully with less people on the mat, there'll be less likely likelihood of that happening. So they decided to take uh, more value into the, the score for Ripon. Uh, they want ones with real impact to be called Ippon, which is fine. And this is what I've been saying for a few years now, is that I think all rolling scores should be Yukos. So I think that a rolling Kataguruma, a rolling Sumigeisha, a rolling Drop Sienagi should all be Yukos. So you can keep the leg grab for the fireman's carries and the kata, and well, kata groomers, but what's going to happen is people are going to go, okay, I could drill this a, a million times but score 10 yukos, or I'll start practicing maybe this, uh, which will score me an ip on. So keeping the leg grab rule, uh, but almost like down, downsizing the quality of the throw, you could say. So all rolling th scores... Cut, rolling Kataguruma, Rolling Sinagi, Rolling Sumigay should be Yukos. But they didn't do that. They decided to ban all kind of leg grabs, so that kind of goes out the window. Uh, but I think this is true. Like if you look at uh, the Beijing Olympics, uh, the Korean that won the 60 kilos at uh, the Olympics, if you watch the highlight reel of what he did at the Olympics, some of those throws would, I wouldn't classify as Ippons, but they did because the person landed on their back, but not really with much force. So... I think it's a really good idea. Big throws are going to start coming out, uh, which I think also for spectators it'll make it a lot easier. If the guy got slammed, it's Ip on. If the guy got not so slammed, Yugo or Wazari. So you can kind of easier way to um, to show spectators. That's not a bad idea. Obviously, if you land in a bridge position, uh, it's Ip on. That's kind of a safety one. But I've never seen someone break their neck bridging anyway. But the reason why they do that is because anyone can bridge out of a throw. So I can throw you for the most perfect Uchimata, but if you 
think if you know it's coming in your bridge, you'll never land on your back. So that's why it should be a bond. So the penalties. Um, I think the penalties, it's good and bad. Um, at the Olympics, like I'm not a big fan of seeing guys win Olympic medals without throwing anybody. All they do is have awesome fitness, awesome grip fighting, awesome control of, of the mat, and then they win on penalties. And I also don't like that I can throw you for a Yuko, but then I might step out and get a Shido, and then I might, once I grip for too long and get a Shido, and then we're even score. But I've actually thrown you for a Yuko, but you've only penalized me for a Yuko. But I've thrown you. Like the sport of judo is throwing, not mat control. So I wasn't really a big fan of the Shidos, unless they work in your favor, in which case you go, oh, yeah. they're not too bad. But um, so during the fight, if you get three Shidos, a fourth one's Hansukamaki, which is the same as it is now. Um, but the difference is now, if you get a Shido, if you get two Shidos, I don't get any points. So they just go on the board, but I don't get any points. The only way I can get points is from holding you down, then you escape, or throwing you. There are two ways I can score, which I think is really good. So the thing I was going to remember about Shidos is that uh, a lot of guys get really, really good at grip fighting and controlling you and controlling the grips and controlling you. And I kind of liken it to soccer. Like when you play soccer or football, um, it's really important to have possession of the ball. The more possession you have, um, the more likely you are of, of scoring. But at the end of a um, soccer match, if it's nil all, they don't give the person that had the ball 80% of the time the win. You didn't score, you don't get, you don't win. So I liken that to judo where guys can control their grips, they can control everything, they have all the possession, but they don't score. They don't deserve to win just through the controlling of the grips and the ring control or the mat control. Um, they should they should win from scoring. Uh, so I think that's a really good analogy there. Um, possession is good and you need to know how to control groups and control the mat. But in the end, the whole goal is scoring points or scoring goals like in soccer, not just possession. Possession is a way to score. Um, but look, at the end of the fight, if you have two Shidos and I have one Shido, because they don't actually add up to any scores, uh, it's nil all, so it goes to uh, golden score. Now, golden score is endless now, so it'll just keep on going forever until someone gets a score, which I think is really cool. Um, I think it's going to be really good, and it's going to show the warrior spirit of, of people fighting until they get a score. But if it goes to golden score, if I'm fighting you and I have a one-sided grip for too long and I get penalized, then I lose. So in the normal five minutes, um, if you have three shootos and I have one, we continue into golden score and the first person to get a shooto loses or if I score, I win. So with the penalties, I think it's not too bad. Uh, it'll make throwing judo winning judo and that's it, not grip fighting judo and, and controlling judo. Um, throwing is going to make you win. So what gets penalized by shooto? The biggest one is breaking the grip with two hands. People hate that. But in all honesty, if I... Break If I'm breaking a grip with two hands, it really is a 100% defensive action. It is 100%. Yes, I can break a grip with two hands and then immediately attack afterwards, in which case it's not. But the act of breaking a grip with two hands and then doing nothing afterwards is 100% defensive. So it should be it should be banned. It should be a Shido because it's 100% defensive. In saying that, though, this is my point of view. They should also penalise people that lay on their stomach and defending 100%. That should also be a penalty, I think, but it's not. I think that if someone went to Nerwaza and they laid on their stomach and defended with all their might and didn't turn around to fight from their back, they should be penalised. And then it'll open up the, the Nerwaza. It'll, people will be trying to pull guard, you'll get to half guard, and then things will start to happen. But at the moment, at a top level, or even at a national level, if guys go on their stomach and hold their arms in tight and cover their neck, you're not going to sub. It's so hard to sub them in 20 seconds, for, you know, even 30 seconds on the mat. A transition's different, but not when they're on their stomach. It's They're too strong and too tight. So if you break a group of two hands, um, it's a Shido. Uh, now, Neil Adams and Ezio Gamba just put up a video of a few grip breaks. Uh, they're illegal, but they're not really that fancy. They're all pretty basic, you know, breaking one with one hand. That's, to be honest, almost, it's really, really hard to do. Um, if you cross grip, so we're talking an airy grip, so if I grab my hand up on your right shoulder and I grab your right sleeve, I must attack straight away or I'll get a penalty. Um, it's a little bit harsh, but that was the rule before, so it's the rule now. You need to attack straight away, which is fine. 
And also if I grab your belt or if I have a one-sided grip. So if I go over the top of your, if I do that cross guard grip uh, that Buras used to do, or I get a one-sided grip in any way, shape or form, um, I've got to attack straight away. Even a sumigeish, which is going to make it really tough. A sumigeish grip, you have to attack straight away. So any sort of two-on-one, you have to attack straight away or penalty, which I think is a bit rough um, because sometimes you can't attack straight away because you've got to maneuver them into position and make them react a bit, but you have to attack straight away. And you can't hug your opponent at all. I'm not a massive fan of the hug because, to be honest, judo these days, it's kind of like uh, the Paralympics now. It's going to be two hands on. Everyone is going to have two hands on. It's going to be really hard to bear hug anybody if they're holding you because you can't get through their, their wrists and their, their arms. So the bear hug's banned, but I don't think it should be because if you're dumb enough to be bear hugged, and I have, Soberov slammed me. Uh, if you're dumb enough to be bear hugged, you're dumb enough to be thrown for rip on. So I think they should leave that, but they shido that as well. Um, if you block anything below the belt, instant Hansakamaki. So really, really harsh. But I think by by making this rule, no leg grabs ever, you're kind of protecting the players because before it was, oh, I did grab the, I grabbed the leg, but it was part of the second movement. And the referee just didn't think so. And it was this massive gray area. And whoever got penalized for leg grabbing, it was always a sob story like, oh, no, I didn't. It was kind of... Like, um, you know, there's always a massive gray area. But now it's pretty obvious. You did or you didn't. So it's, it's, it protects players from complaining and it protects referees from making the wrong decision because it's very easy to see whether you grabbed or blocked the legs or not. So um, Craig Fallon has a nice card of groomer that he does where he grabs the le, uh, a lapel and he grabs the bottom lapel and then he drops under for a card of groomer. But the, the other hand is above the belt. So have a look up on YouTube. Actually, I'll put a link at the bottom here if I can. And um, and you'll see. Now, I don't know if that's legal because the hand is above the belt, but then he blocks the leg with the gi that's above the belt. So he blocks. I probably think it's illegal. But we'll really need a referee to kind of uh, correct me on that because the hands are above the belt, the hand, but then he's still blocking the legs below the belt with the hand but the grip's higher than the belt so it's kind of an awkward one but have a look and see what you think and talk to a referee that you know so uh ozakami arm bars and strangles should be uh continue outside the contest area and i think that's fine because in the end if you've got me in a hold down and i crawl off the mat i didn't get out of the hold down i i shouldn't be rewarded for that i should um I should stay and try to get out. Same with arm bars and strangles. Uh, I think that's fine. So if I have you in a strangle and you crawl off the mat, the referee doesn't say, Marta, you continue into, into, until you tap out, which I think is really good. And it's recognized as being as effective to the opponents. Obviously, you can't drag them out of the mat and then set it up and then do it. It's got to be while it's on. Uh, arm bars are allowed for cadets, and I think that's fine. If you allow strangles, you allow arm bars. Um, plus, with the rise of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, people um, do arm bars all the time and they know it's safe. Uh, you just got to really encourage kids to tap out. But also to know their limit, you've got to put a few arm bars on them with an adult kind of go, this is when you tap. Don't tap here when it's too early, but don't tap past any of this point. So, you know, it's just an education thing. So the bow, so when you enter the mat area, you've got to walk up the entrance bow oh, I doesn't say that but you probably do anyway and then you've got to bow to each other and come on at the same time so i think this is just a nice thing you know like when you go and watch the the tennis one player comes out then the other player comes out pretty simultaneously or close enough together one person doesn't come out and wait around for a few minutes before the other guy comes out it's an over exaggeration but it'd just be nice to see him come out at the same time um and they must not shake hands or slap hands or do the you know the rock or anything like that um, before the start of the contest, so the bow is sufficient enough, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's a little habit that people do, but um, you should be able to get out of that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, so the duration of contest. So there's a five minute match, and once it goes to golden score, if it does, there's there's unlimited golden score, which is going to be for some messy fights, messy messy fights uh, throughout all nations. But uh, I think it'll be really good. I think it'd be really good having no time limit because one, the you know, hand ties cancelled. Referee doesn't have a favour because so often in 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 judo, if you fight, say I'm dominating you for five minutes, but I don't get a score on either of you, and we go to golden score, and I've dominated you for five minutes, and then in golden score you dominate me for three minutes. 
uh, at the end of the match, to be honest, we've gone on the mat, been on the mat 15 minutes, around about after the stops. The referee can't remember what happened in the first five minutes, most of them, to be honest. So he, all he remembers is the golden score part, which is when you were dominating me. So most of the time, if you dominate golden score, you'll win the match because they never remember the first five minutes. They'll always remember the last three. So uh, I think by doing this, um, it's, it's, it's up to whoever has the biggest gas tank. Uh, and lastly, IJF um, asking one referee and one coach they're going to have seminars in each nation uh, or continent, um, which I don't think is very fair. One referee and one coach. Now, for some countries, they have 10 or 15 federations. So who are you going to take? Like that one coach or one ref might just go back to their federation and not help anyone else out and not spread the knowledge. So I think um, the IJF have put up that judo database uh, that I'll link down the bottom here as well that you can go on there and have a look at all the videos and that sort of stuff. But they should really be... Like, this is affecting judo from from the Olympic level world champion to grassroots. It's affecting everything. So they should be doing more than just, I think, one referee and one coach. But, you know, that's not for me. So in terms of um, what you... What I think as an overall whole, uh, what was happening was there was too much of this in, in judo. Like, too much... Grip fighting, grip breaking, grip fighting, grip breaking. And there was no real throwing. But now, by making people grip fight less, one, you're not going to get as many finger injuries, all right, getting your fingers snapped off in the gi. But it's going to be more connection. And when there's, when there's more connection between opponents, there's going to be more throwing. It's that simple. Um, I think what's really important now is, is grip fighting, but understanding gripping a bit more than just breaking grips with two hands. I think you're going to have to start using snappiness and um, and really understanding grips really well. And I'll do a video about it when I get a, a partner later on about a few things you can change up with your Uchikomi and your Nagakomi and your training at home that'll help you develop, um, you know, throwing people when they've got two hands on you opposed to, you know, you controlling their sleeve. Uh, also, upper body strength is going to be massive, I think, now. Massive forearm strength and upper body strength is going to be huge. Where before you could get away with you know dropping under um, and, and grip breaking with a few things, but now with you got two hands on your opponent the entire five minute match, your arms are going to blow out. So I think upper body strength more than ever before is going to be really important and fitness. Your fitness is going to be through the roof because your arms you know don't last long with galactic acid so i think that's it's going to be really important and also throwing judo you're going to have to do a lot of nagakomi a lot of nagakomi no more uchikomi for an entire session uh you're gonna have to do a lot of nagakomi a lot of off the grip throwing uh and a lot of pretty much a lot of uchimadas as you know traditional judo like of what it is uh, and grip and defending with your hips now. Before, when someone used to turn in for a, for a haragoshi, you could just drop your hips and grab their leg. Now, you're going to have to block with your hips, so using your hips. So um, I think exercises, they're going to increase your explosiveness of the hips, deadlifts, power cleans, box jumps, <clears throat> that sort of stuff. You really need to get that hips. If you look at how the Japanese are built, they've got thick hips and lower body, and that's what you need now to defend, where before you could just reach down and grab a leg. So that's really important. Anyway, guys, so if you like the video, I will get a discussion going about a few things. We can clear some a few things up, but that's just me going through the referee rules for the next few years. So really, get stronger in the upper body. Get snappier in the upper body. Stronger hips and legs, so full body as always. Um, really start practicing your naked commies. You have to do a lot of throws. Uh, and if you did a lot of leg grabs in the past, start bashing out 10,000 commies and like 10,000 naked commies to uh, improve your judo. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.